Hello everyone, and welcome back to our channel. I'm delighted to have you back again. And hopefully we're going to come up here with a video that might be interesting. And this one here is a very simple title, Nothing Catchy. And it's going to be called Manifesting Abundance. A lot of people um, have, before we get to that part of it, a lot of people had gotten hold of me about the online meditation group that I mentioned. And I'm going to make this short and sweet and to the point. Due to a whole lot of other people's rules, regulations, you can't do this, you can't do that, you have to buy a license if you want music, you have to pay this fee, you have to pay that fee. And all of the work that's involved in doing so and remembering everybody's do's and can't do's, all of a sudden the fun out of doing a meditation group online in the format I was going to do just ran out the window, so I'm not doing it, not in that format. I'm going to simplify it and work it into some simple way of doing it without all of the do's and don'ts and can't do's this and buy a license and the rest of the crap that goes along with it. Uh, simply because, as many of you know, I'm a very simple guy. I like to keep things down to simply if I'm doing a video, giving information or doing a meditation, I'm not into bells and whistles and control knobs and all of the rest of that crap that everybody else has to have. You know, and the fancy Getty cards and the music at the beginning of the video and all that other hoopla shit. So I'm going to come up with a different way, and I'll perhaps use the streaming way of doing it, a way to do it. But it's still going to go on, but it's going to take a different form. So it may be a little bit yet, but I'll notify everybody. All right. The uh, Manifesting Abundance uh, is the title of this video. And I hear a lot of people right off the bat, you say, well, Manifesting Abundance. Well, usually what people are thinking of, most people as a general rule nowadays, when they're talking about manifesting abundance, that is things that surround them. In a lot of cases, it could be money. Uh, in a lot of cases, it could be a holiday. Uh, in a lot of cases, it could be a house, a new car, um, all of those kinds of things. I'm going to take a little bit different approach in doing this video because I've read enough books and I've seen enough people doing seminars and workshops on creating or manifesting abundance and I don't like the way they're doing it. It didn't work for me then and it doesn't work for me now. And I'm going to approach the abundance issue this way. In the past when I was a very introverted, shy, couldn't speak in a group, and had a serious drinking problem and other wonderful things that a lot of us live with these days, I realized that I needed to make some changes in my life. And one of the things that I was raised in was relatively what I call during my teenage years and even when I was younger, poverty consciousness, which a lot of us seem to go through where there never seems to be enough to go around to supply the things that you need and basic survival is a struggle. And I'm finding that even today in this world, as technologically as advanced as we're supposed to be, I question the issue is, is why is it people are still living from paycheck to, paycheck to paycheck? So there's something wrong with the program. So I decided to change the program for me when it came to abundance. And what I decided to do was this, and this you can consider suggesting and I want to make this clear to everybody, all right? I'm just giving you my experience in this video. I'm giving it in general terms. I'm not pinpointing, segregating, or making comments about anyone in person. This is a general information session, okay? Please take it in that context. So <clears throat> when I decided to do something about it, I did an inventory. And the inventory <coughs> had two aspects of it. One, what are the positive creative things about me? And what are the 
well, we need help areas. When I got the list finished, we had a very short list of the creative potential, and we had a very long list of we need some help here. And the approach that I used was I went out and I spent thousands of dollars on self-help books. At that time, there was no internet, obviously. And buying uh, cassette tapes at that time with the latest in uh, abundance manifesting and everything else. And I used all of that stuff. And I see they're basically just using the same stuff now today. And all they're doing is retooling it, refinishing it. And I keep seeing the same thing in these seminars and big workshops they're doing. It's just the same old, same old stuff. All they do is put new bells and whistles and recycle a little bit, put new terminology into it. It's the same as it was 40 years ago. So here's my suggestion on manifesting abundance in your life. It's a very simple one. In your life and in your circumference of friends, associates, and your time on the internet and what people that you may have an interest in looking at, take a look at the people in your life right now who have what you call abundance. First of all, that will give you an idea of what you define in your mind and your consciousness as abundance for you. Take a look out there and see what you define and realize what you think abundance is as you see it from other people. And then that's your definition of abundance. And that could be money. As I said, it could be material things. It could be half a dozen other things that is abundance to you. However, when one wants to manifest abundance, they will tell you, well, you need to get a somebody to do it for you. You need to start looking at a career change, getting more education. You need to go to school. You need to uh, get a trade. Uh, because everybody defines the abundance as the ability to get more material things. Okay? And that's a program. The way to do this is, as you have followed that suggestion that I made about taking a look around and seeing what people you think have abundance in your perception, and then that is what is you need to take a look at. If it manifests for you personally as seeing people with money, or with things, or with being uh, a singer, a rock star, a movie star, and they have the money, the fame, the notoriety, all of that, and that's considered abundance, that's where you're coming from. I'm going to make <clears throat> this suggestion here. I'm going to share with you my definition of abundance. <clears throat> when I started looking for the keys to changes, like I said, I made that two list. And I went out and I bought all the books, spent a lot of money, a lot of money, thousands of dollars, in fact, on all of the potpourri that was in vogue at that particular point in time. And finally, I come to the conclusion that said, no, there's a piece missing here. They've all missed a piece. There's an element missing. So I came up with the brilliant deduction. Why don't I look for personalities or people? who have that abundance feeling about them. They just do, okay? They just be. Everything that they do, they may not be rich. They not, may not even be famous. They may not have no recognition at all. But they just have a persona around them. And they have, everything just seems to flow toward them. And I found a couple. And they were just average people. And I spent one time studying a guy who had his own business. And there were similar businesses in town. And he was very successful. He seemed to have people coming to him doing the same thing 
that the other people were doing, but he seemed to have more abundance. Everything seemed to come toward him with a flow. And I realized something. If you don't have abundance in your life, you don't have an abundance personality. Ah, you see, abundance personality. So what does it take to have an abundance personality? Now, when I say an abundance personality, I'm not saying somebody who's perfect. I'm saying somebody who has created a radiation or an emanation from themselves so that this primitive form of the law of attraction that many people call, with more books and tapes and other seminars you can go to, just flows toward them like a magnet, like they're a magnet for abundance in whatever their creative endeavor is. And I started studying their personalities, and I did this with other people in different directions over the course of three years. And you know what I found? They all had specific traits that were equal in each one of them. They were all charismatic. They were all in the business of serving people. They had that sincerity within them that when they were doing something for you, you got all of them. And if you were buying a service from them and something went wrong with it, you knew you were going to go there and you were going to get service from that person because they had integrity, honesty, sincerity, compassion, all of those major principles of characteristics of personality. Did it mean that, like I said, they were all wealthy? Absolutely not. Were they famous? Absolutely not. In many cases, they were just average people. But what they had was they had the abundance personality. So how do you acquire the abundance personality? Go back again to what I said in the beginning. Take a look around you and see what you think personally. Abundance is, as you look around you and see, okay, is this person abundant? Does this person have abundance? Does that person have abundance? And then do something else. Take a look at the personality of the person who you think has abundance. Who you think has abundance. And you may find out that they only have one particular aspect of themselves that's very creative, that supplies them abundance, but they can be just as dysfunctional as the dysfunctional society we're becoming now. And it can be in all kinds of hot water and trouble. Like you see, many famous people, very creative, are committing suicide. Yet they have lots of money, fame, everything that everybody else is wanting to say, well, why did they commit suicide? Because they didn't have the balance of the abundance personality to be able to do that. That's why it happened. So abundant personality is a combination of all of those things that I mentioned. So how did I get them after that? Once I discovered this, I said, holy shit, I'm onto something. And I said, this is what I want. I want the abundance personality because I'm really tired in poverty consciousness. And I know it had been bred into me from the life that I was brought up in the way I was as a kid. And I decided to do something about it. So I started looking for other people, it was a little difficult at that time because there was no internet. So I started looking for other people and I would watch and see if I could find some, someone who is a specialist at some, something. And it could be any type of person from any walk of life. And what I would do is I would take a look at the one thing in their personality and some of them would have sincerity, compassion, honesty. They would have three or four of them, right? And then they would be basically have their dysfunctional pattern. And I would take a look at the one prominent feature that some of them have. Usually everyone who has an abundance personality will have at least one, sometimes two or three or even four of those characteristics that I mentioned. Okay, sincerity, honesty, compassion, integrity, of wanting to be of service. All right, sincere, all of those things. 
And usually the person will have one and it's very, very strong in them. And sometimes two or three, as I mentioned, but usually one is very dominant. So what I would do is I would focus my attention specifically on that particular part of that person. This took a little bit of work to do this, but I was hungry. And that's the problem with a lot of people out there today. It's the problem with a lot of people who are out there because there's so many distractions today. Okay. You know, your little zapper thing there you hold your head and make your ears go deaf after a while. Uh, because there's so many distractions, nobody can really get into detail. So what I did was I would try to connect with that person in some way, look at the dominant feature that they had in their personality, and then I would say to myself, okay, I'm going to steal it from them. I'm going to borrow it from them, and I'm going to fake that trait until it becomes part of me. Now, how do you fake a trait? <laughs> I like that word. Fake a trait. My God, I can be creative just in using words. Fake a trait. Hmm. I love it. Abundance personality. Look at this. All this new stuff. All right? Trader, just like that, right out of my head. Fake a trade. So what I would do is I would adopt it. I would fake it by going into myself and pretending. Pretending that I was like that, even if I wasn't. And I would do it by myself for a while. You know, the old talking in the mirror thing. Or if I was out in public or talking with people, I would try to really hold that specific trait that I was focused on while I was actually engaged with communication, whatever, with people. And I noticed this. The part that people call the subconscious mind, all right, can't tell the difference between a truth and a lie. And one thing I noticed about liars is the more you tell a lie, the more it becomes your truth. The more you tell the truth, the more it becomes your reality. So that part of your mind, the subconscious, can't tell the difference between what's the truth and what's a lie. It only goes by what you repetitiously keep putting in. And here's a shining example, a shining example of the repetition factor. My father, bless his soul, was the greatest teacher that I ever had. He did me a favor. He had this little habit that he used to do, and he used to do it up until about the time we were, I was 12 years old, after that I didn't see him for 30 years. But when he kind of got pissed off at me, he'd come up behind me and he kind of whacked me on the back of the head. And when I fell on the floor, he said, that's for nothing. Now do something stupid. And he did that enough times that repetitiously by the time I started going into high school, I actually thought I was stupid. And I never finished high school. That's how stupid I was. And by the time I got into adulthood, I actually still believed I was stupid. So, you know, as stupid says, stupid does. And that's what I did. I created a stupid says, stupid does a lot for about 20 years or so. Yeah, about 20. Until I started getting into this and recognizing. So when I started faking and pretending I already knew that that part of the subconscious can't tell the difference between a truth and a lie. I carried it even further. I was at that point I had learned how to meditate. That was the best thing I've learned how to do. So what I did is not only did I start doing it in communication with people to the best of my ability, I would go into a meditation and at that particular point in time, I used to focus in my third eye. I didn't know about the heart center yet because it hadn't awakened. So I would focus in my third eye. And I would see myself pretending with my third eye by creating a visual presentation of me having that attribute of character or personality of abundance. And one thing about me, all right, I have a really positive trait that a lot of people could adopt. I'm consistent. I don't move quick, but I'm consistent. If you take a look on the YouTube channel, you'll see I've been on YouTube for almost 11 years going. And I have seen hundreds, if not thousands, of people 
go through YouTube, especially through the two areas that I specialize in, which I'm not mentioning their name in this video. Hundreds of them come and go every year. Why? Because they have not acquired the abundance personality and the other trait that they need to have consistency. Too many give up too quick because they're in a big hurry. Life is a foot race. It is not, folks. It is a journey. You can acquire and adopt and fake a trait to acquire the abundance personality. The abundance personality. I see a lot of people who are even up on YouTube and they're in Facebook and they're talking about abundance and I don't see them talking about anything that I think is correct yet. They still don't get it. You've got to have an abundance personality to attract what is suitable to you as a flow. Because we live in a world of material things, even those who are spiritually evolving, I see this, they're concerned about abundance. Abundance is what? Well, how many clients am I going to have this week? Uh, gee whiz, am I going to have a breakout of a rash? Am I going to have this? Am I going to have that? They don't have an abundance personality because their personality hasn't acquired those aspects. And I'm consistent. I'm there consistently. I have no doubt that I will achieve every goal that I want to do. And I don't have goals that are written down in that word. All of my goals and achievement come by intuition and guidance. So I've acquired over a period of time, through repetition and faking the trait, my personality begin to change. And it took, I'm going to give you an example. When I started the fake a trait method, and looking at other people, seeing their personality, and seeing the personality abundance trait and the composition of characteristics that were required for it, I knew it was going to take a while. You know what? But all you hot shots out there will think, oh, I'm going to do it in six months. Mel can do it in three years. I'm going to do it in six months. It don't work that way. It takes time. And a lot of you don't have the time because you're too busy doing frivolous and useless things that require nothing but giving you a pain in the ass. How many of you right now are doing things that give you nothing but a pain in the ass on a daily basis? How many of you? Lots of you. Stop doing it. If you're doing something that gives you a pain in the ass and you really don't want to do it, stop doing it. Life is a journey. Enjoy. So what happens is after a while, because the little guy inside at the subconscious level can't tell the difference between a truth and a lie, and I started visualizing and making movies and playing at it and having fun, and I say, wow, I'm really into this shit. This really works for me. And guess what happened? After a while, I'll be a son of a gun, I started acting just like that, the abundance personality, just radiating. And all of a sudden, things started coming toward me and opportunities and situations and things that I never thought or dreamed that would come. And where the hell did it all come from? It was always there. And it's always there in everyone on this planet if you have the abundance personality. Think about it. And I can help you get there. If you like. There is no reason on this planet for everyone not to have the abundance personality. It's about reprogramming, doing some study, and looking, first of all, at the most important aspect. Look around you. Look out there and see what you think defines the abundance. What makes you think that this is someone who has abundance? And if you look at it, then you're going to know where you're, where you're coming from. Then look at the person that you have defined as being having abundance. Then look at their personality. And if they don't have what I've been talking about, then your abundance factor might be just all about material things, money, and that stuff. And that's not what it's about. That is the mind and the consciousness of a child, an immature adult in a, that state of being. 
because there is, and I know some people are not going to like that statement, but you and I and a lot of other people know there are a lot of people walking around in adult bodies who have the mentality and the maturity level of a 15-year-old, and they're wondering where the abundance is. The abundance is there for everyone, but you've got to do the reprogramming. Now, here's the beauty of it. The process we're going through, this evolutionary process, and the Kundalini rising, and the heart center chakra awakening, is attempting, is attempting to wake everybody up. And what is the one thing that has happened to every one of you that has and is going through the heart center awakening? It is changing your personality. And most of you are still fighting it with innuendos, old belief systems, and religious indoctrination, and peer pressure indoctrination. And worst of all is our educational system, which is 200 light years behind the times, because it produces a product that is nothing more than a human being in a state of consciousness which is oriented now towards material things, material success, and all of those kind of things. They don't have the abundance personality. They have to work. And you have to work long and hard. The abundance personality doesn't have to work long and hard. Because the flow comes toward them because they have the abundance personality with all of the traits that I've mentioned. And if you want to speed the process up, you can join in and do the way that I've just suggested to you by taking a look at some of the examples of this at this particular point. And if you need help, I can help. That's simple. Now, perhaps if I get some positive feedback on this, I would be delighted to add this to the package of meditations that I can do uh, on perhaps a later video. And maybe what I'll do is uh, put it up and put it away someplace in a private section on YouTube. And maybe if you want to go and, you know, donate five bucks, go in and watch the video, get yourself reprogrammed, maybe I'll consider that. How's that sound? Cool? All right. Have a great day, everyone.